This is definitely the worst week professionally for me ever. Um, yeah, bad week. You know what? We're here. We're, we're, we're rolling. You know how many? You want to hear something crazy? If you look at what happened this week, right? First of all, everybody's excited about Tony Habib. We we switch him out. We put in um, Max Holloway. Ticket sales go up. The thing is, uh, is almost sold out. You see the the craziness that's happened the last couple days. 253 refunds. 253 re refunds. We had a gate of like uh, of, of three three million uh, at the gates of 2.9 million now. So pretty amazing. And Al's friends and family will probably pick up those 200. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, you know, a New Yorker now fighting for the title isn't a bad thing. And I guarantee you, you know, we'll sell tomorrow. We'll, we'll get the gate up over three million again. So, I mean, I don't know what other sport or what other combat sport this could be done in you know they're scrambling right now for the triple g fight and i hope they do it i hope they pull it off and you know triple g gets to fight somebody and and, and make some good money but it's it's pretty amazing uh how awesome our fans are can you clarify though that is a title fight also for for uh, uh for, the I title think, is also for him? Like no, for no, it's uh, the Athletic Commission has an actual regulation that if you are over you know, the 155.0 limit, it's not for the title. But obviously, if he wins, he's the man. It's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll figure out, you know, figure out those technicalities after the fight. What was the situation with Holloway? Like why, you know, he didn't make weight? What was the situation? Yeah, he got the 160 and apparently the commission didn't like how he looked and didn't want him to continue to cut weight. And if that's the way they feel, it's the way I feel too. I, I, I respect Max so much for stepping up for this fight and trying to make the weight. He's a stud and I appreciate him very much. And, uh, you know, we'll get him back in his own division, give him the time to train and get ready for this fight and uh, fight Ortega. The commission seemed to be making all kinds of interesting decisions today. Um, apparently a doctor wasn't involved in Max being pulled from the fight, according to a Hawaiian outlet. Um, the situation with Paul Felder, he wasn't ranked, so they said that he couldn't fight. What's it been like today dealing with the commission and all of that red tape? It's definitely interesting dealing with New York. Um, very different than everywhere else, but... You know, these guys just had a situation here not too long ago, so I think that they're uh, overly cautious, as they should be. But I can tell you, you know me, if I, if I think something's on right, they've been very fair with us, and they've worked this. Listen, look at, look at all the stuff that's happened. We're still here. We're having an event. The gate's still where it was, and everything's good. So, um, you know, they, they're different, and they have their own rules and, and regs, but they've been great to us. Announced the fight between RDA and Colby now for um, Chicago. Did anything change, like the the fact that what happened with Conor McGregor make you change this? What changed was we never announced the fight. We never announced that fight and where it was. And uh, you know, as we, we, we reason we don't announce these things until they're done, is because they're never done until they're done. But there was a, a, a situation about security in Brazil. People were like worried about security in Brazil. Colby going to Brazil. Yeah. Um, but, but that, we, we worry about that situation everywhere. Um, you know, uh, it's not just Brazil or other countries. Look at what happened here yesterday. And to be honest with you, a lot more damage and a lot more injuries would have happened if our limited security crew that was there didn't do what they did. Um, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, you'll see it. The full video comes out today. So you guys will see from beginning to end what happened. What did happen with Connor, though, uh, from yeah, your point of view? I don't know. You've seen nothing. I don't know. He's, he's got legal issues right now. And, uh, you know, we got to get through this this uh, this weekend and then sit down with my crew, you know, Ari included, and figure out where we go from here. We saw what happened with him in Bellator. And then, of course, this situation. This appears to be a man unhinged. Are you worried about his well-being and his health and his state of mind? I am. Uh, and I, I don't think it's... I don't think it's it's uh, uh, it's not known. I care about Connor, and uh, yeah, this isn't the, the the you know Connor's always been had the type. The reason he's such a huge star, he he has this unbelievable personality. He's very he's very uh, cocky and, and and brash and everything else. But this is just over the top. Makes me feel like something's wrong. You know, he was offended yesterday that I said that, but. I agree with you, yes, this is a guy who's acting like 
things aren't right. So the octagon for him is not a conversation right now. A conversation is where you go from here in terms of, I guess, figuring out what's going on with him in his life. Right. We got to see what's going on with him legally, what's going on with him personally, and uh, you know, the guy's the guy's a, a big star who's been a big part of the UFC for five years now, and uh, yeah, we got we got we got a lot of work to do. Did he apologize or did you talk to him? I have not talked to him. I have not talked to him. Um, but yesterday he did apologize. He apologized for, uh, you know, shaking Rose up and, and hurting Michael Chiesa. And that was before we knew that Ray Borg was hurt too. And, you know, connor has got a lot of things he's got to get through over the next uh, year, I would imagine. And we'll go from there. You mentioned earlier he thought it was justified what he did. Is that a bad sign? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, he had beef with with Habib. There were, I mean, I don't know how many people on the bus that had nothing to do with it, innocent people. Um, you know, and I, th I think he needs some time to sit back, reflect, and think about it and look at what happened. And, and uh, like I said, we'll, we'll see how this thing plays out. The event has a lot, has only nine fights now, right? Eight fights now. Um, are you guys planning? Today you guys just had this huge uh, 25 years of the UFC celebration. Are you planning? Because it's kind of like, you know, uh, bittersweet right now for you, right? Are we, are, so what's the question? It, it, it is a little bit bittersweet to have like this huge event after what happened this week. Well, it's not bittersweet. It's nuts. It's, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just happy there's an event with good fights still on the card. So um, it's unbelievable. And like I said, as far as the, the gate and everything else goes, testament to our fans. And as far as the fight still being going, that's why it's the greatest sport in the world. Uh, these fighters are awesome. And I mean, Aya Kinta, you guys have had issues with him in the past, and he steps up in a, in a massive way. Uh, how did this whole thing come together with yeah. him? Like, how, did, how was he to end up being the guy? Because at the, you know, when you think about people that you know, haven't had a, a great relationship with you over the years and have said some interesting things, so to speak. Right. How does he become the guy? Well, it's, you know, I think that we, we have those relationships off and on with a lot of fighters. It happens. You know, these guys are, when you're dealing with, uh, you know, 500 alpha males and females, everybody thinks they're the best. Everybody thinks that they deserve this and that. And, um, and then there's reality. So we're always going to butt heads and we're not going to see eye to eye with people. But... Al Iaquinta is a real fighter. He's got a real record. He's a tough guy, and uh, he jumped at an opportunity. And that's that's what I love. I love guys. Felder and Iaquinta were freaking out. You know, basically demanding this fight. I love that. You left out Pettis' name. I love that. Well, Pettis, Pettis, I, you know, I have had a great relationship with Pettis for a long time too. Pettis was not overly. I don't think his team was. I shouldn't say Pettis. I don't think his team was excited about him taking this opportunity. And you know what happens. You've seen it many times before when a guy is in a position like this and he has a great opportunity, yet his team is against him on it. Outcome is usually this. Obviously, you know, Connor... I'm a Connor fan. Yes. But this a is lot a, of people this, are. This is this isn't okay. This is unacceptable no, behavior. No, listen. We all saw. Well, maybe you didn't. There was an incident with, uh, involving Artem Lobov, very good friend of Connor McGregor. Connor saw that. Went out there to defend his friend, if you will. Now, okay. You know, you and your friends get together. We're going to sort this guy out. You get on a plane, you fly to New York. You would think at some point you would calm down. Uh, uh, you know, clearer heads would prevail. I would say there was maybe a little bit of whiskey on the plane. They got off there. I'm pretty sure they didn't intend on this happening. But, you know, the mob mentality, you, you, uh, you know, you uh, encourage each other you know, to, to get this way. The drinking, all this type of stuff. They go out there, they act like this. Totally unacceptable. I mean, if you look at Conor McGregor, here's a guy who has the world at his feet. He's rich. Insanely wealthy. He's famous. People love him. They adore him all over the world. He's got a beautiful girlfriend. He's got a child. He has no reason to be going around acting like this. It's a bad day for Conor McGregor. I'm sure nobody realizes that more than he does. You know, you can see the regret on his face. It's uh, it's a sad day for the sport as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, when you have somebody like Conor McGregor and who's been able to accomplish what he's been able to accomplish, uh, you know, he, he does get get a bigger bit of respect. And at the same time, there's a responsibility. And I understand in a fight game, there's this whole trash talking, and it, and it goes far sometimes. I've been in it myself with John Jones and, and Quentin 
and, and, and it has went outside of, you know, the octagon or where people can see. But at the same time, it didn't go that far. It could have, but it didn't go that far. Now, when you allow yourself to go to that limit, you and you're not able to pull yourself back in, the ramifications of what can happen could be anything. And this is just one of the many possible ways that 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 things could have went wrong. He's lucky this was the result instead of something much bigger. And this is, honestly, this is what happens when you want to keep it real. You want to go out there, I'm this guy, I'm this guy. But at the same time, when you go out there and, and you want to defend that honor who you are, you have to understand that there's going to be huge ramifications for it.